I'm uh, Dr. Pirtle, uh, and this is my first year as a faculty in residence. My name is uh, Dr. Matawal Makut, and my current role uh, is being a faculty in residence in Better Hall. Uh, usually your responsibilities include engaging with students uh, in various uh, ways. And from time to time as a faculty in residence, you also organize programs with students uh, to kind of just promote that interaction that we typically do not have in class. Just being here and interacting uh, with students, uh, knowing that I'm more than just you know a person who delivers lectures, but you know I have personal activities. Uh, hopefully, that help help students to understand that you know we're also regular people. Besides the regular uh, responsibilities that you have as a faculty member, you live here on campus in one of the residential halls. Um, participating in as many events as, as you can and also come up with some of your own events. Your whole undergraduate university experience will not be complete if you're not on campus because you tend to interact with so many other students. There are so many activities that you know exposes you to what the university culture is all about. Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Jessica Barron, Sierra Rose, Elisa Goldberg, Max Morinelli, Kayla Williams, Matt Satchwell, Burley Gomez, Jennifer Drew Bear, Taylor Finke, Stephanie Jockman, Jeremy Lamberti, Sky Jenkins, David Castigiano. Wednesday, June 12, 2019. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live! Good evening, everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Jessica Barron, with Housing and Residential Education at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Tonight's episode is, We Are the Bulls. A reminder to everyone joining us live that we're here to answer your questions so you're ready to live the Bulls life. If you have a question, no matter where or how you're watching, just type it in the comments and we'll answer you in real time. Well, let's go ahead and meet tonight's guests. Joining us tonight from our assignments team is the incredible Associate Director for Operations and Outreach, our always informative and all-knowing Dave Kloiber. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm good, Dave. Welcome back to the show again. Thanks. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's always a pleasure to have you. Our first guest tonight is an instructor and undergraduate director in the Department of Women's and Gender Studies. She has served as a faculty fellow for housing and residential education, and this fall, she will begin her first year as a faculty in residence. Welcome, Dr. Tangela Searles. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, Tangela. So, sure. tell us who you are and what you do here at USF. Like you said, my name is Dr. Tangela Searles, Searles like pearls, and I'm an instructor here at USF in the Department of Women's and Gender Studies and also the undergraduate director in that same department. And I teach classes such as Intro to Women's and Gender Studies, Literature by Women of Color, Black Feminisms, and I'm also going to be teaching Interdisciplinary Approaches to Disability Studies. In addition to that, I'm also a faculty fellow and I'll be starting my faculty in residence position this upcoming school year. So have a few things here that I do at the university and I love every bit of it. Wonderful, Tangela. It sounds like you do a lot, and I love that intro with your name. It's very, very catchy. Thanks. <laughs> Tangela, what is the role of a faculty fellow? What is that? 
So a faculty fellow is of course a faculty member who works in conjunction with housing and residential education to provide students with an experience outside of the classroom. And so we know that we're limited when it comes to the classroom in terms of time and space and a lot of times students get this idea that faculty members are these big scary people who they can't touch or who they can't get to know. And so the faculty fellow position provides um, faculty a way to kind of start to break down those barriers and meet students students in um, more traditional spaces such as like in their dorm rooms or on campus when we're hosting events and programs such as the Real Talk series or lectures or different things like that. So it's a good way for students to get to know their faculty members or get to know their professors outside of the classroom. That's wonderful, Tangela, because I'm sure everybody, even you yourself, can probably relate to being a student your first year and being intimidated by your professors, right? Yes, absolutely. Tangela, I've heard that you've also volunteered in something called Bull Hall. Can you tell us about your experience? Absolutely. So Bull Hall is USF's um move-in days so are um, we have it every year and so what it is is that students current USF students faculty and staff we volunteer to help incoming students or first-year students move into their dorm rooms and that can be a number of things from actually toting things and moving things and helping them set up um, and it can also be helping students navigate the campus because it's a pretty big campus um, last year I was stationed in the Marshall Student Center and I just helped students figure out where they needed to go and who they needed to see on campus. What do you think was the best thing that you got to do with Bull Hall? Like, what experience did you learn from that? I got a chance to meet a lot of parents, and I think that that was one of the best, like one of the highlights, because a lot of parents were then reassured that their students were in um, good hands, and so I think that that was useful. And then to see different students start to see folk who they could connect with and start the buddings of future friendships, that was also kind of nice to see. That's great because everyone can relate to being the jitters and the nerves of coming onto a big campus for the first time, right? Absolutely. Tangela, what about Stonewall Suites? What is Stonewall Suites and what makes it so special? Stonewall Suites is a very special place. It's um, one of our LLCs, so living learning communities. And so it's special for a lot of reasons, but a couple reasons are, one, the name itself. So the name itself, Stonewall, is a nod to the Stonewall Riots, which happened about 50 years ago this June. Um, and it's one of the um, landmark events for the contemporary gay pride movement. And so the name is a nod to that particular moment in history. And even more than that, it's a space where um, LGBTQIA students and allies can kind of live and work and learn together and start to build those relationships, start to build community, start to discover who they are as they continue to kind of journey throughout their time here at USF. So it's definitely a place about making connections and starting the buddings of what Will later be like their USF experience. Tangela, you mentioned connect, like making connections and students feeling welcomed. How can, how can inclusive spaces such as Stonewall Suites help students feel more at home while they're here at USF? I would say inclusive spaces would do well to um, pay attention and be mindful of the intersections that exist even in those inclusive spaces. So for an example, within the LGBTQIA community, there are also a number of other differences such as you know race or socioeconomic backgrounds or maybe even religion. And all of those different things kind of intersect to inform a person's experience of the world. And so an inclusive space such as Stonewall would do well to recognize that people People are coming to these spaces with a whole host of experiences and to use that as um, momentum to learn, mo learn more. We know that um, inclusive spaces don't always mean, you know, uncomfortable spaces. We know that sometimes learning takes place when we're pushed to those places that are most uncomfortable for us. And so I would say that inclusive spaces would do well to foster that sense of learning and growing within the students here. Yeah, Tangela, you mentioned learning and growing, and that's definitely a big part of what college is all about, discovering Absolutely. who you are, right? Absolutely. Um, Tangela, what advice then would you give to students as they enter this transformative time in their lives? I would say that students would do well to um, make a schedule and adhere to it. I know that that's probably not the best or not the uh, most popular advice, but students will find that once they transition from USF and those three to four years or, or three to five years or however long will fly by quickly than you think, 
But developing a schedule and sticking to it would be one of those skills that will serve you well past USF. And then another thing that I would say is to identify your values or identify those things that you can bring to situations that will provide value for whatever people you're working with or whatever circumstance you find yourself in. Because USF in the world is filled with brilliant people, filled with charming people, but the difference is the value that you bring to a space and being able to articulate that in such a way that people get it. And being here at USF will definitely help you as you navigate that. Tangela, you've brought up a lot of great points about all the new things that college brings to students. How can families best support their students' academic and personal success during their first year here at USF? I would say that families um, would do well to encourage their students to take classes that they might not um, seem to be interested in. So for an example, if your student is interested in the sciences, then encourage them to also take humanities courses such as English or history, or maybe even social science courses such as women's and gender studies or anthropology or sociology. Um, and then another thing would be to encourage students to take advantage of the resources that we offer here at USF. USF has a plethora of resources. Um, students' academic advisors could be the starting point to helping them figure out where to start and what all we have available here. But in addition to the academic advisors, we have the Office of Undergraduate Re Research, we have the Study Abroad Office, um, Counseling Center, the Wellness Center. There's a whole host of things that students can um, be involved with. Um, and then finally, I'd say, if possible, send care packages. <laughs> Did you ever get care packages, Tangela? And I if did. you did, what was in there? And what was your favorite thing? I did. I got a lot of like staple food, so like the top ramen noodles and like Capri Suns and like stuff to help me get through the late night snacks or munchies, I guess, when I was hungry and all of the anything um, you could microwave places. and keep right. in the pantry for for days, right? Right, because the university that I went to was a really small HBCU, and so we didn't have facilities where after a certain time we could just go walk over to the food court and grab something to eat, so I was most thankful for the food. Students here might be most thankful for a little extra money, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I think all students love food, so anywhere you go, I think that's always the number one choice. Truth. Well, Tangela, thank you so much for all the information you gave us tonight, and it was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for having me, Jessica. It's time for us to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. This video is about the Stonewall Suites living learning community, so you don't want to miss it. We'll be back with more USF Housing Live right after this. I work in the Office of Multicultural Affairs and the LLC that we're involved with is Stonewall Suites, which is our inclusive environment for LGBTQ plus and allied students. The LLC is open to anyone as long as they identify as either LGBTQ plus or if they identify as an ally of the LGBT community. So what makes my LLC unique is definitely the people within it. Um, we have so many different people who have so many different walks of life, so many different personalities, so many different careers. But the one thing that ties them all together is like, we care about queer people. Uh, it's very, very fun. It's uh, very community based. Everyone there is very, really, really happy to spend time with each other and very, very open and inviting. We strategically picked the name, so Stonewall Suites is paying tribute to the Stonewall riots that happened in the 1960s that really kicked off the LGBTQ plus movement. During the Stonewall riots, it wasn't just queer people out in the streets. It was their straight friends, their allies, who were also out there with them, showing that they cared. So it, even if you're not a queer student, you can still care and you can still want to be involved. My favorite thing about living in this LLC has got to be the community aspect of it. Um, I've made so many good friends that I never thought I would have made, and it's literally my favorite part of being in USF right now. It's the LLC. I know that I personally gained confidence because one of my favorite things is that there's no assumptions made about you there. It's unique in that way. It's special, and the, the connections that you're going to make will last a lifetime. Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Welcome back everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm Jessica Barron and it's time to chat with Dave Kloiber from Housing and Residential Education. Dave, tell us who you are and what you do here at USF. Sure, I'm David Kloiber. I'm the Associate Director for Operations and Outreach and I'm responsible for 
the, all the applications, assignments, billing, collections, all the technology at USF Housing. And so really when it comes to housing someone here at USF, I'm it. Dave, we're getting down to the wire. Dave, are there still any spaces available on campus for students? Yes, um, we are getting very close to being at capacity. And so um, we have really, at this point, we have less than 100 beds available at this very given time. But um, we still have opportunities for students to apply. We are still working on opening up more spaces for our students. So really, the, the name of the game right now is if you're ready, get a room. Yeah, Dave, I'm sure with what you just said, you have a lot of students probably going onto their computers and trying to log in to see where they can actually live. Can students still apply for summer housing? That's the next question. Yes, uh, they definitely can still apply for summer and for fall. Um, I've been talking with parents over the last two weeks, uh, parents and families of our students who are attending orientation. And uh, yeah, we're still, I know that on Monday we got uh, 10 applications just in the morning for the fall and a and a handful for summer as well. So yes, there's still time to apply for summer, but remember we open next week on Friday. And so classes start that following Monday on the 24th. And so time is running short. Even if you don't apply before classes begin, let's say you decide, oh, I'm gonna commute this summer. Well, you know, uh, if you haven't been in Tampa or if you do live in Tampa, the traffic can be real interesting. And you know, I only live 23 miles away and from campus, but sometimes it take me over an hour to get to work so it's not going to be a lot different for our students so if the commute isn't working out for you even this summer there's still time yeah traffic is always one of those things that no matter where you're coming from it can be it can be a surprise from one day to the next right? definitely can be dave so what you mentioned fall and spring and it's coming up really fast when is the last day to select a room for fall and spring sure our self-selection process will end uh, at the end of june on june 30th uh, at midnight uh, of that last day and so uh, that's not only for our self-selection to pick your room for the first time but it's also to change your room so um, you know we talked a lot about uh, the LLC opportunities that we have here and um, that the LLC we we're talking about with Stonewall is to really start to learn to understand yourself but also the people around you and um, you know I talk to parents every summer about the whole idea of when a student learns who their roommate is, the first thing they do is go to Facebook and start looking them up and do some they, research on whoever they do research and you know they form opinions without even talking to the person. And uh, we all know that, that people sometimes put things on Facebook that they just want other people to think about them, but it may not be their essence. Mm -hmm. And so um, all I can do is caution our, our students out there to uh, when they when they look up their roommate don't just use that to form their opinion. Um, we provide typically, the, the, if the students allowed us, we provide the email address for your roommate. And so reach out, roommates, reach out to your roommates and, and try to form those connections before you arrive because it'll make your whole arrival easier. You'll figure out who wants to bring what. Do you really need two microwaves in the room? Probably not. Uh, do you need two fridges? Yeah, a lot of people say yes. but. Um, yeah, reach out and don't just say, oh, I need, a room, I need a room change right away because I don't like my roommate. Well, if you never met him, you really don't know you don't like him. Mm -hmm. USF is one of the most diverse campuses we have in the state of Florida, if not the most diverse. And so we embrace our diversity here. We're trying to make a global citizen here. We're not trying to just make a person who's going to be successful here in Tampa. And so um, as a student coming to USF, Embrace difference, embrace diversity, and embrace, not physically all the time, but embrace the idea of meeting someone who's going to be very different from you, and you're going to find out it works out. Yeah. Tiangela, I see you nodding a lot. <laughs> Did you want to add anything to what Dave just mentioned? No, I think Dave said it perfectly. I'm like, yes, all of that. <laughs> and more. <laughs> yeah, Dave, my next question. You were talking a lot right now about the rooms and how fast they're going. Yes. So this, I mean, your answer to my next question might change, you know, it, it might change by the end of this show, but what spaces are still available on campus? Sure, well, right now, um, we have run out of female beds. So if you're, if you're a female right now, unless we received a cancellation sometime today that I, don't, I wasn't aware of, uh, you, when you go online right now to select a room, it's gonna tell you we have no rooms available at this time. Does that mean it's the end? No. 
Uh, if you're a male, we have we still have less than 50 beds available. They are traditional style in our village. The village has almost a third of our beds on campus. And so it's not uncommon that those are going to be our last beds because they have so many of that style. But um, we are opening up more beds as soon as we can. You know, we, we have LOCs and we have uh, other programs on campus that we reserve spaces for. And as they tell us, oh, we're not going to fill, we're going to start releasing those beds. And so uh, ideally, we're going to be releasing a number of beds either later this week or early next week to provide more opportunities for our students to select a room on campus. So don't give up hope. There's still hope. And uh, like I said, if I, if I can't stress it enough, if you're ready to assign yourself a room, go on and start looking now. And uh, more rooms will be opening up. Dave, you mentioned LLCs, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. Why should students join an LLC, and how can they go about doing so? Sure. Uh, well, an LLC is, is short for Living Learning Community. And so we do have 13 Living Learning Communities here at USF for the next year. And an LLC is based on either an academic or a, uh, uh, I'll call it an interest for an individual, such as uh, the LLC we talked about earlier, which was Stonewall. Um, that's based on an on a interest uh, of students. And so um, it's a time where they can, where our students can have a shared living experience to explore either that academic interest or that personal interest that they may have. And uh, it can open up a lot of doors for people. It can help people uh, explore avenues that they never thought to explore before. Uh, it hooks them up with faculty, like we have here. Um, and so it's not just the faculty and residents that you may get to know, but what program may be helping to sponsor that LLC? And so, you know, we have LLCs for business and engineering and honors and, and pre-health and pre-nursing and rising health, which is uh, I want to be a pre-med major or, or something in the medical field and so many others. Um, but those opportunities that you get in an LLC will uh, possibly create new opportunities for you in the future, either to team up with a faculty member to do research or to maybe get an internship either on or off campus to, to further your education. And so it's a, just a great way to uh, really enhance your whole academic and non-academic experience here at USF. Dave, with all the great things you said about LLCs, I'm sure a lot of students are now really interested in an LLC, but I heard spots are going really fast. Which LLCs still have space remaining? You know, we have two that are, uh, are fairly filled up. Um, we have our uh, rising health professionals, because you know, so many people come to USF, or really every college out there, and say, I'm pre-med. Um, they have a, uh, it's a, it's a small community, and so they don't have a ton of spaces, so they filled up very quickly. Uh, in addition, our student support services uh, program, our SSS program, is also full, but that's a different kind of program. It's an LLC, but it's uh, through invitation through your admission process. And so uh, those students have already been selected, and at this point, uh, their LLC is at capacity. Um, but to my knowledge, all the other LLCs we have still have at least a handful, if not a number of beds available. Uh, the two that I can think of off the top of my head that the last time I, I looked had uh, a good amount of space were our Bulls Business Community, our BBC, and our STEM uh, LLC. And so STEM for science, technology, engineering, and math, I believe. Um, so anybody who's a science major or a math major, or an engineering, or a technology major. The STEM community could be something just right up your alley. Dave, let's talk about another part of the housing application process, immunizations. If students are still sending in the required immunizations, how long do those forms take to process? Sure, our student, our student, health, uh, well, our student health Services Office is committed to trying to get all the immunizations completed within a 48-hour period, so turning them around the, within two business days. Um, please note that sometimes they get it done faster and other times they're actually going to do, uh, it may take more time based on the volume that they receive at a given time. Um, but we're trying to always get them out within 48 hours. 
Dave, we have a viewer named Isaac who has a question. Sure. And maybe you can either answer it or direct him to someone who can answer his question. He says, can I mail packages to USF before I move in during international student orientation? Or do I have to wait until I move in? No, you can actually move, uh, you can mail them ahead of time. But all we ask is that you time the mail to arrive on or about the day that you're going to check into housing. So if you're here for, um, I'm going to guess you're here for the uh, global uh, orientation, the, what we call GBW, Global Beginnings Week, um, try to time it so that your package arrives in the residential area about the time that you're due to check in. Um, to give you an idea, we received n over 91,000 packages wow. in housing last year. And a thousand, so, you said 91,000 91, over the year. Wow. And so um, I'll be honest, we don't have facilities big enough to hold all those. So we do ask that uh, you time it so that you're going to be here within a day because uh, if you ship it now, uh, we may not even have you on our list right now. And so you may not even know what your address is. So um, please wait until you have your address and then again, time it and so that you'll be there to pick it up within a few days. Awesome, thank you, Dave. Um, and also, going back to the question about immunizations and how long those forms take to process, is the process any different for international students? Um, our standard immunizations that are required for everybody, are, are for, at least for housing, are the meningitis and hepatitis B vaccines. Um, you can either show proof that you have them or you can decline them. We have an additional uh, it's not an immunization, but we require that our international students have a screening for tuberculosis or TB. Um, while TB has almost been eradicated within the United States, we can't say that for every country uh, around the world. And so uh, there, there may be an additional requirement based on where you're coming from. But it's easier just to say all international students may be required to get screened for, tuber uh, for TB prior to their arrival or upon arrival. Dave, if a student would like to submit something called an ADA medical request form, what is that process like? Sure. Um, for a student who may need an accommodation, uh, either for a particular kind of room to uh, assist with either a medical or a disability uh, situation, we have a form available on our housing portal. We do ask that they submit the form that corresponds to the time they're going to be here. So if they're here for fall, spring, and they've done a, a 2019 fall and a 2020 spring housing application, that they submit the ADA slash medical accommodation request form. Uh, that corresponds with that application period. Um, once they submit that, they'll receive an email saying, thank you for su your submission. If you have additional documentation, please reply to this email and attach the documentation so that we can use that to help consider uh, your request. Um, some requests may, be, may require additional documentation and we'll request that from you depending on what the situation is. And um, what's important to note is our priority deadline for the fall is quickly approaching. It's also Saturday, it's June 15th. And so um, those who may need a particular room to uh, address their accommodation needs, really need to uh, put in that request as soon as possible because uh, after the June 15th, we may be releasing those rooms because we're already at very near capacity and we're going to need every room, every room we can get. And so submit that as soon as possible so that we can review it and uh, hopefully provide you an accommodation that you need. Dave, for any students who have any more questions regarding housing or the application process, where can they reach you? Boy, they can reach me in so many different ways. Um, you can always go to our website and review the information there. If you can't, and that website address, of course, is usf.edu slash housing. Uh, if you want to ask a particular question that you can't find the answer for, you can always email us at uh, housing at usf.edu. That goes to, our, to my uh, general office. And then if you want to ask me a uh, question directly via email, it's dkloiber at usf.edu. Uh, my email address is right on the, on the housing website under uh, the staff information. And uh, of course, you can always reach out and call us. 
Uh, we're 813-974-0001. We're the number one exchange on our campus. And so we are most important. We're housing. And so mm -hmm. uh, you got to live somewhere. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we hope you're living with us. Dave, well, you've, been out, you've become a regular on the show. But as always, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I always enjoy coming here, and I look forward to the next day. Awesome. Now it's time for some special announcements. Summer Bee Move-In is right around the corner. The move-in process begins at 9 a.m. on Friday, June 21st. Read the Summer 2019 opening information on our website so you have all the information that you need. Are you interested in living in a living learning community? Well, we still have spots left in some of our living learning communities, but the last day to apply is this Saturday, June 15th. Act fast. Explore your options at usf.edu slash LLC to find the community that's best for you. Do you want to move in early and for free? If you said yes, then you should consider volunteering for Bull Hall. Bull Hall is a tradition here on campus. Every year on grand opening day, Bulls volunteer to assist other students with the move-in process. Learn more and apply today at usf.edu slash housing. Well, that's just about all the time we have. But before we go, I want to remind you that USF Housing Live airs every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us for our next episode, Eat, on Wednesday, June 19th. You can watch at facebook.com slash USF Housing, the USF class of 2023 Facebook group, or in full 1080p high definition at youtube.com slash USF Housing. USF Housing Live is produced by Housing and Residential Education at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto is, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Thank you to tonight's guests, Dr. Tangela Serrells and Dave Kloiber for joining me this evening. Thank you to our production crew, to you, our viewers, and of course, there's always just one last thing. Go Bulls! Good night, everyone.